Hey guys, welcome back. Hey GameStop. Welcome welcome here for the first time. If you're a GameStop employee, if you're a GameStop manager, if you're the games, if you own GameStop, if you're a board member at GameStop, uh, this video is for you because uh I got a heads up for you. You're about to get scammed really really badly. It's uh it's it's not even funny. I think most people that are in the card space can kind of see this coming a mile away. Your employees are not ready for this. I don't give a shit if you have a, a training video that shows them what a real one looks like, what a fake one looks like. Well, you're in you're in trouble with this one. I know that we got a five hundred dollar cap, but what's going on here is we have GameStop who is now going to be purchasing PSA graded Pokemon cards. Uh, it looks like they'll probably be grading other or buying other trading cards as well. I don't know what the hell this card is, but congratulations, GameStop. You're trying to be a local game store. Um, maybe, maybe a little bit too late for this transition. I would imagine they're probably going to pay you next to nothing for this stuff. But I, first off, it, my apologies and, and, you know, don't take any offense to this if you're a GameStop employee, but, uh, there's been many times I, if let's say you want to buy something from GameStop, you give them a call on the phone to see if they have something in stock or you ask them if they have it in the store even. Let's say, let's say I'm asking for Silver Tempest, and I'm like, hey, do you have that new set, Silver Tempest? Uh, you know, the one that came out like a week or two ago? And they're like, oh, I, we have Pokemon card. Okay, do, do you have Silver Tempest? They're like, which one is that again? Oh, it's the one with the flamboyant seagull. You know, the, uh, the, the one with the, he's like a seagull, but he's kind of flamboyant. He's kind of chunky. He's got some big ass hand wings. Uh, he's got dinosaur spines, and, uh, and he's always screaming at shit. Yeah, him, that one. And they're like, oh, let me check. So, I get it. It's mostly, it's a game store. So, for the most part, they're going to have a general understanding of, like, consoles, games, whatever, whatever that might be. Maybe they, maybe they become experts in Funko Pops and whatever. The, maybe, maybe you're lucky. Your GameStop employee knows what the next set is, what's coming out, what just arrived, what's, what's on the shelf. You know, the three sets that are on the shelf at the time. Maybe they know that stuff. From my experience, they usually don't. And to, to expect them to know what a real card looks like, a real graded card looks like, is uh, my apologies, but it's asking too much. Unless they're going to completely transform themselves into an LGS, essentially, and they're going to hire people that are working at LGSs or that you know have that experience to work at an LG. I, I just can't, I can't see it coming. Maybe, maybe have that one guy. You have the one LGS guy at your GameStop. You got to wait for him to show up before you can sell anything to them. Even then. All right. You guys know that this video and all videos are sponsored by the Rattle Link Tree. And uh, on that Rattle Link Tree, you find lots of sick, nasty codes, sick, nasty affiliate links that you can take when you're buying the stuff that you need and want already to help support the channel at the same time. Get yourself a good deal. Code Rattle5 on trollandtoad.com and the old card market. Good old reliable card market. If you're from Europe or you have a friend in Europe and can get them to buy you stuff, um, middleman you stuff through there. So we have an article here. Uh, and yes, so the, apparently we're going to, it's only going to be PSA 8 and higher cards valued at 500 or more. So I don't know if this, this $500 value is whether or not that's like purchase value, their purchase value. Or the card itself is actually valued at 500, and they're going to give you 100 for it. It's hard to say. Uh, with with games, like they're they're going to give you basically nothing. Where these don't really have that same diminishing value. It's kind of like it's like a car. You drive a car off the lot. Uh, it's it tanks. It's going to tank in price. Um, with Pokemon cards, I mean, not that the stuff can't drop in price. But typically, the stuff is going to slowly go up in value over time. So maybe maybe they take that into consideration. Same thing with a game. You open a game, you take that plastic wrap off that game, my God, does it ever tank in value. Uh, some of the Switch games, though, they, they retain their value pretty well. I think a lot of that has to do with they don't go on sale. But it's it's weird. I, I can't imagine it's going to be a good idea. Maybe there'll be some like some gimmicks, some plays, and it doesn't say whether or not you can. Can it be like seven five hundred dollar cards? Can you bring in forty five hundred dollar cards? Can you just you bring in as many as you want? Don't, no limit as long as the cards individually are five hundred dollars or less. Can you just keep going in? Can you walk out the door, come back in with another five hundred dollar card? Now, the thing is, the $500, it, that, that doesn't matter. People are still going to abuse the living hell out of this, even if they get $250, even if they get $200. If they can bring in a card that they paid $699 for, that's counterfeit, 
or if they can take something out of a case. We'll, we'll look at the examples here. And through my videos, I've shown counterfeit cards side by side with the real thing. People watch the video. I presume they watch the video. Uh, and then they leave a comment in the comments and they're like, oh shit, I have no idea what the difference is. And I'm pointing out the differences. So like to expect someone at GameStop who doesn't know what a goddamn flamboyant seagull is to, to, <laughs> to, 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 to <laughs> come on, please. This is such a bad idea. And yes, maybe you can teach them. Do uh, you, you think they're going to look up the cert every time? And even if they do, the cert can be real. Uh, we'll look at e examples here. So we got uh, we got another article here. GameStop could be buying the old Pokemon cards. Sell us, your, sell us your trading cards. We're the best. We love you. XOX. I don't think they should get into that. Uh, apparently, they're going to be selling uh, singles as well. So you give uh, you give the old Google a proxy PSA search, and usually the, the ones that are showing up here, uh, PSA will take action against the companies that are just blatantly copying their slab and making a fake version of it uh, but that doesn't stop them because guess what whoop de doo whether it's Etsy whether it's Alibaba wherever these other sites where the sketchies the sketchiest of sketch counterfeit items are uh, bootleg counterfeit whatever you want to call them they're there they're gonna show up it might not it some of them might not look like the real thing some of them might fool someone some of them might fool a GameStop employee um, maybe do we need to do an experiment? Do I need to go into GameStop and ask ask them if my cards are real? Maybe maybe we'll try that. That could be could be interesting. Let me know down below if you want me to do that. Um, yeah, poor game. You know, I'll have to buy something or maybe get them coffee or something <laughs> as a thank you for for analyzing my card. But here we have it. So uh, not only that, we got labels, we got fake cards, and no, not. It, I, I get people come into the discord people will send me Instagram DMs people will send me messages saying like hey is this real and I have to tell them no it's not real here's what the real thing looks like cross-reference something that is known real it, I've seen worse than this come across my DMs and people it, hey is this a counterfeit box yeah it is but that's the thing the, the average person and even some of this stuff gets so close to the real thing. Some bad pictures. Maybe maybe they're looking at it quick. Maybe the store is busy at the time. And voila. Minus 500 bucks. Times however many cards this person brings in. Do, are they going to require ID? Are, are they going to say, oh, I need a copy of your ID. I need your address and all this other stuff. So that you can trade stuff in? Probably not. They don't do it with games or anything like that, so it'd be weird if they did for for anything else. So it's a it's a dangerous game, dangerous game to get into. There are fakes everywhere, uh, especially the PSA stuff. There's a ton of fakes, fake slabs, fake labels, fake, and the labels don't have to be fake. So even if they have some kind of training where they know how to use a black light, they took notes out of uh, PK's playbook. He made a video uh, talking about this or did a live stream talking about this last night. Uh, if you haven't checked that out, you should probably do so. But, again, the, the, the most hardcore of the hardcore is going to be able to tell that the case here, outside of the fact that it doesn't have a label, the card is blatantly fake. Take the card out of there. It can be a real card. It can be a real label. But if the label is for something that's graded higher than what the actual card is, because you swap the card out, then voila. The cases get scary close. Some of these cases... I don't know if we'll come across them here, are scary close. Scary, scary close. And the biggest example, the scariest example, is the Zhao's fake PSA slab scams. There's a couple videos I have on that bad boy right there. Can you spot it? Can you tell? This Spring Battle Road victory ring. Can you tell it's fake? It's a real label. It's a real card, but the slab is fake. So they took out the 10 to get it graded again, and they put in a lesser condition copy, which, unless you look up the cert, unless you compare the centering, unless you compare if there's a hollow, like, hollow foil pattern on it, like, that's all stuff. That is, that is way beyond. This is like, that's like, I, I, so far removed from what somebody at GameStop is going to be able to do. And no, you're not going to have billion, majillion dollar cards coming through there. 
Same with these. This video here, I had comments on it saying, hey, I can't tell the difference. I watched your video. You showed me the difference. So these are essentially molds of what a real PSA case is. So they probably separated one. Maybe they got a clean break on one of them. Got it apart cleanly or cleanly enough and cleaned it up to the point that they could take a mold of it and reproduce the slab itself. So unless you're looking for little details, like in the corners, the corners are, are going to be like rounded instead of nice and sharp. These little little divots here that hold the case together, the frosting is usually wrong on them. That sort of little detail, like the, the PSA logo at the bottom here, might be hard to see because we've got a progress bar in the in the way, but like little details where, where it's like too chunky or it's not as clean as the real thing. It's like little stuff like that because it can be a real, it can be a real label. Just the card is swapped out with another real card, just not a 10 because the, there's a huge, huge price swing when it comes to like the, the condition rarity, the 10 versus the eight, swap it out with an eight and you know, Jimmy John at, at GameStop is not going to be able to tell. He's still going to be looking up what a Lugia is. And it's not his fault because he's not, the, the, it's not something that you're going to be an expert in unless you spend all day, every day looking at it. And no, the majority of the cards that are traded in are probably not going to be counterfeit. But if you think that someone's not going to go in there and abuse the hell out of this. So there we have it. We have the, we have the, the, the real label, the real card. Fake slab. So like other than like small differences in around the edges on these scans or photos, it's pretty obvious with the uh with the prongs here in the middle. But that's not that's something that could change. To think they're not gonna get better and better is it's it's scary stuff. Again, fake slab. Could you tell? Could GameStop tell? Like you have to look close at this stuff. And like in around the corners, you see how the, the corners are sharp on the right hand side here? And these ones are less sharp. That tells you it's fake. This one on the left is fake. I, the amount of people that would be able to distinguish this fake from real slab is basically non-existent. Even collectors will struggle with this. Like serious collectors. If they haven't seen the videos, if they don't know this exists, like they could easily fall for this because it's a real label. It's a real case. Well, it's a mold of a real case. It's very scary stuff. And it is, it is just GameStop is, is just going to get robbed blind by this kind of thing. So I don't know what kind of security measures they need to put in place. We have multiple videos here uh, for anyone that hasn't seen it. The same with these. Uh, so on the pictures here, you can see that they don't have PSA in the uh, on the label itself. They, the ones they send you do have PSA, um, but uh, I think these guys got shut down. I don't know if they're still shut down, but we have the real deal. We have the fake deal. It's got the real cert number. Sometimes the barcodes don't actually match. Sometimes the text on the top doesn't quite match, as you can see here. Is that something that somebody's going to be able to pick out when they're just you know? new to new to checking this stuff out they they did the the training video or whatever gamestop sends out and says hey this is what a real real one looks like and again the label can be real so you can't even just check the label and hope for the best now if it's inexpensive stuff this is probably not happening but when it gets to the 500 hundred dollar marker and they can come in with 10 of them like they are gonna milk the living hell out of this Again, we have the uh, the Mew on the top here, very counterfeit, uh, and we have this dude here, Zhao, who was who was doing the old swapperoos, taking the real cards out of the ten cases, putting in lesser graded copies, resubmitting those cards for grading. There was a whole thing about how he's uh, people in the art world are saying he's scamming there too. It's a mess. And GameStop, you are in for a rude awakening. They're doing like a trial run or whatever at this point in time, but. I, I don't know. Maybe they figure out that, like, hey, it's a bad idea. Maybe that trial run doesn't attract any uh, scammerinis. Maybe not. Maybe so. Maybe only once they uh, they do a full launch, if they see that they're making money, if they see that, that they're getting the deals, 
I don't know if their intention is to like put the stuff in the store itself that they purchased from or they send it all back and verify it and then send it back out because they could be on the hook too if they if they buy these cards for a fraction of the value let's say they buy a $500 card for $100 but then they sell it for $500 to some other customer and then that customer finds out hey this is counterfeit then are they they're on the hook for that $500 like someone's going to come back to them and be like hey you sold me a fake cart. I don't know, guys. It's uh, it's it's just it just seems like a terrible idea. Uh, the singles and stuff like that. Also, again, you you have to basically revamp your entire business model at that point in time. It's not just a training video for the people that are used to throwing a switch game at somebody every now and then. Maybe they help them pick out their uh, a Funko Pop when they can't decide whether they want Elmer Fudd or or uh, Jason Page. They, they, you know, they're on. They, they, got, they, they got their allowance, but they can only afford one or the other. So, they take Elmer Fudd because one's a Jason Page Funko Pop, right? All right, thanks for tuning in. See you guys next time. Hopefully, this. Uh, I, we'll see what happens. I guess join the Discord. Happy Friday. Have a good weekend. See you in the happy hour. If you want to be there, see you on Sunday for some auctions. If you want to hang out for that, the Discord is is is. Plenty open. Lots of, lots of space for you. Bye.